I wasn't sure on how to start off this video. So I'll just start at how it all began. It all started in 1997, almost 20 years ago. I was about to leave work. I had to wait for a friend of mine. So while I was waiting, I read one of the magazines we had in our lobby. I like science. But inside this magazine, there was an article that intrigued me. Immune to a 20th century plague. We knew in 1997 and maybe before that, that there were individuals who are immune to the HIV virus that leads to the breaking down of the immune system, or AIDS. When I read this in 1997, I thought that there was hope for the millions who had contracted this disease. I've always loved the sciences, and I remember reading around the same time Scientists were making plans to map out the entire human genome. And I believe this began, uh, this project began in uh, 1990. This was awesome because I believe that, that it meant one day when the entire code was cracked, we could find out where or what part in the genetic code that was responsible for making these individuals immune to the HIV virus and giving those infected a cure. Scientists believe or believed that this immunity may have stemmed from the ancestry of the individuals. Caucasians, whose European ancestors survived the Black Death, or cholera or Ebola, or some other unknown disease. These ancestors may have passed down a genetic mutation that makes their descendants immune to the HIV virus that leads to AIDS. Both parents must carry this mutated gene that makes their offspring immune to HIV. If only one parent carries this genetic mutation, the offspring may still become infected, but will stay healthier longer than most. I eventually forgot about all of this until around the year 2000 when I read an article about a man named Steve Crone who watched his friends die of AIDS and as he lived the same lifestyle he never caught the disease himself. Doctors found out he was immune. He carried the same genetic mutation and immunity and research on Mr. Crohn's immunity led to the drug Marvarock. I thought, cool, scientists are actually doing something. On a sad note, Mr. Crohn, after seeing all his friends die of this disease, including his partner, in 2013, the man who couldn't catch AIDS committed suicide. Jumping to 2008 Germany, when a man only known as the Berlin patient was profiled in newspapers and media all around the world. We now know him as, as Mr. Timothy Ray Brown. 
he had been cured of HIV through stem cells taken from the bone marrow of an individual with the same genetic immunity. Publicly, he was the first person ever to be cured of HIV. In 2012, there was a report on two HIV positive individuals in the Boston area who had undergone stem cell transplants to treat cancers, just like Mr. Timothy Ray Brown. And after the treatment, doctors found they had lost all detectable traces of the HIV virus in the system of these two individuals. But a year later, Boston researchers were reporting the return of the HIV virus in the two patients who had become virus free after undergoing bone marrow transplants, dashing hopes of a possible cure that had generated widespread excitement. Weak, weak as water. First of all, they knew that to have a possible cure, you would need the stem cells of a donor with the immunity and not just an ordinary compatible donor. Second of all, while the web pages on the internet may have done a somewhat in-depth story on this case, what most of us saw was on television on the news, morning, noon, and night. And it was portrayed as if the bone marrow transplant by itself didn't work. So people would see this and think the Timothy Ray Brown case was just a fluke. And we all would ignore it and forget about it. Weak, weak as water. And as you guys can see, from the same Discover magazine from 1997, they actually predicted a possible cure using bone marrow transplants. As the years passed, I asked myself the same questions you guys are probably asking right now in 2015. Why don't we have a cure? Why is this information not really publicized? Because I've asked lots of friends of mine and they've never heard of it. I even have friends in the medical community who have never heard of this. I've even lent them the magazine or scanned the article and given it to them. And they're all surprised that this actually exists. The answer is billions and billions in research grants. This is just to keep people alive. Not cured. Just alive. It's just too lucrative for all involved to find a cure. I think early on in early years, they may have been serious in trying to find a cure. But I think as the money grew, I think so did the greed and the realization that, well, it's a lot of money to be made from this disease. And you know what? I love money too. But I think I would have to draw the line if I had to step over the corpses of men, women, and children just to pick up my paycheck. You know, that's just wrong. I scanned from my magazine the entire article in color. Yeah. Along with these other cases you just saw with a few others. The first thing I want you guys to do is, after reading this, is to send it to as many of your friends as possible. 
You want to spam? Now's the time to do it. The second thing is, we need to find a way to identify these people who are immune. You know, start a Facebook page or some other social media page about these individuals and the way possibly to have them tested a crowdfunding project or something. Maybe someone will come forth, hey, I'm John Doe and I'm immune. I'm Jane Doe and I'm immune. Let's do this. Third, we need to find someone honest. Someone honest and not on the take to update the information on this research. Because everything I've, everything I've seen about this immunity and this genetic research, no one, I mean no one, is on the same page. you think they would be, but no. We need to find out what was the plague that their ancestors survived. I've seen the Black Plague. I've seen possible cholera. Even now, I've seen some saying that it was possibly Ebola. No one knows because no one's on the same page. And what is the true ratio of Caucasians who are immune to this? I've seen 0.1%. I've seen 1%. I've seen in Northern Europe, it's from 5 to 15%. Again, why is no one on the same page? I've seen that pure Africans don't carry this genetic anomaly, nor do pure Asians. I've read that some African Americans may have this genetic anomaly, but it doesn't give what ratio. What about the ratio of men compared to women? I mean, what is this? You would think all of these guys would be on the same page, but no, because there is too much money involved for anyone to care. Now is the time to change that, people. We can do this. My voice is starting to crack because I'm getting excited, so I'm going to leave while I can still speak. Let's take care of this. I'm out of here. Peace.